Hello, welcome to our Hearst Festival Cocktail Masterclass. My name is Jacob Jackman. I'm a cocktail bartender from London, but now living in Sussex. I've worked in many bars across London, Brighton and beyond. And today we're going to be teaching you how to make a classic daiquiri. On top of that, we'll be talking a little bit about what makes a cocktail good and a little bit of rum history just thrown into boot. So, what makes a cocktail good for me? It's a combination of three things. Dilution, balance, and good ingredients. Good ingredients is simple. Just buy some good quality alcohol, freshly squeezed lime juice, and some homemade sugar syrup. One to one, easy as that. For balance, it's a case of what flavors are you using? Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it salty? Is it bitter? The right combination of these elements will combine to make an excellent cocktail. And then when it comes to dilution, that's all about the shaking. We'll get to that in a bit. So first off, what is the daiquiri? Well, for me, it's the holy trinity of rum. As I said, rum, lime, and sugar, three elements that when combined make an absolutely delicious drink, as long as you do it right. It's a drink that many bartenders use to cut their teeth on, and one that we use to test bartenders to make sure they're just as good as they say they are. So, what is rum? Well, in the 17th century, the Portuguese were doing their grand tour of the planet, and on the way they found sugarcane, which they brought back to Portugal and then took on them with their travels, trying to find somewhere where it would grow fervently. They discovered the Americas, in particular South America, in even more particular, the landmass that we now know as Brazil. They colonized it and they started to grow their sugarcane. When they realized eventually that the plantation workers were taking the sugarcane juice, the first press of the sugarcane, fermenting it and distilling it into what we now know as cachaça, they thought, hang on, this is pretty good. Why don't we do something with this? Eventually, a Swedish sailor got his hands on it and took it north up to the Caribbean islands where the British were doing much the same. The British, however, they didn't have so much sugarcane juice free that they could start making it into alcohol willy-nilly. So, they use the after product. When you finally make sugar, you have this beautiful granulated cane sugar and you have a large amount of molasses. The British had so much molasses they didn't know what to do with it and they even started chucking it over the cliffs where some of the cliffs in Barbados are still, to this day, stained black. So the British were making this fiery, hellish, molasses rum that we now know today as dark rum, British rum, sometimes even navy rum. And the entrance of the navy was where things really started to get interesting. The British Navy turned up in full force and decided that this stuff's actually really nice. It was known as Kill Devil by the locals because it stripped everything away from inside you, burned away all the demons, and that was something that sailors could definitely get on board with. So, the British Navy offered up a contract to any of the plantations who could produce the best possible rum. And this started an absolute fervor. Every single plantation, every single island were fighting over this contract option because it would mean that they would be funded for the rest of their lives, potentially. And that is why we have so much variety on the rum market these days, because the sheer amount of people just trying to pump out this British Navy rum. So the sailors were happy. They were getting their half a pint ration of rum every single day. And the admirals were happy because the sailors were happy. Everything was getting done. There was one admiral in particular who wasn't as happy as he could be. Admiral Vernon, known for wearing a big grogram coat. He saw his sailors drunk as a skunk and suffering many times out of 10 from scurvy. So, he decided to start watering down the rum rations with lime juice to fight the scurvy and either water or very weak beer. And this concoction of lime juice, rum and beer or water became known by the sailors as Grog, nicknamed after Admiral Grog and his big grog and coat. The sensation it gave them, one of being pretty wasted, especially if they were using water that had been on board for a six month journey, left them very groggy. Now, this term is still being used to this day, and we're still kind of drinking grog to this day because the daiquiri is an adaptation of that original grog recipe. Very simple, rum, lime, and instead of water, we've come around to sugar syrup, just to add a little sweetener. So, 
where did the daiquiri come from? Well, it was on a Spanish island, Cuba, where an American traveler decided to recreate that grog recipe, but instead of using water or beer, he started using ice. And that was where the full-fledged form of the cocktail came into its own. And it became very, very popular with Americans during the Second World War, when they couldn't get their hands on any European spirits, any gin, any vodka or any whiskey. So they turned to their Latin American friends and started importing huge amounts of rum. The daiquiri has remained a staple of every bar ever since. So, how do you make one? Well, it's fairly simple. Get your cocktail shaker ready. I hope you've got one with you. Start off with the rum. Any bartender worth his salt will always start with the alcohol. It shows that he's not worried about making a mistake and costing himself some money or rather the owner. So you should try that too. 50 milliliters of white rum. You can use dark rum if you so wish, or if you don't have any white rum, but white rum is much better suited to this drink. Following the white rum, we have our freshly squeezed lime juice. I cannot stress this enough. Do try and buy good limes from a good source, a farm shop, a greengrocer's, anything from a supermarket or worse, any pre-juiced lime juice is gonna be terrible. So 25 milliliters of lime juice. And last but not least, we have our sugar syrup. Now I make mine at home, as I mentioned before one to one, so 200 grams of sugar to 200 milliliters of water produces a very nice syrup. If you want a sweeter drink, simply use more sugar in your syrup. Don't use more syrup in a cocktail, water it down too much. So for this, we're using 12 and a half milliliters. As I mentioned before, balance is everything. You can do more rum, you can do more lime juice, you can do more sugar syrup. Whatever makes you happy. Ernest Hemingway would have loads of rum, a little bit of lime and almost no sugar. A recipe that has been utilized by many a bartender at the end of a long shift. Next up, probably the most important ingredient in the cocktail is ice. You want the shaker to be almost full to the brim with ice. At this point, close it up. Now, next up is the shaking. So it's not quite as simple as just having a little dance with it. You want to be aerating, you want to be reaching terminal coldness as soon as possible, and you want to give it a lot of movement so that the ice is melting. But you don't want to shake it for too long, otherwise you're going to end up with a watery mess. So, get your glass ready. I like to go up, back, down. Voila. And then it's as simple as pouring out your drink. Perfect. Enjoy.